Modern society is expert at controlling the behavior of men, in particular, the expectations, responsibilities, and the burdens of the consumer society, propped up by mortgage and credit card usury. For many, leaving education is merely the beginning of a succession of gambits in paying the bills each month. No grander purpose or vision lies beyond this bottom line. Some will say that this has always been the case, and in some ways they are correct. However, the last five decades have witnessed the full-spectrum politicization of the cultural environment, and this is unique. Being socially and politically compliant became a more vital part of life than ever before in Western history. In the past, there always existed the frontier or beyond. There was thus always a place to go for the man with a cause or the noble outlaw. The Icelandic sagas, which exalted this type of man, are replete with such characters, those who sought out new continents. But the globalized world of the 21st century offers no way out. Nowhere is it free from the airport, the convenience store, the security cameras, the informant, or the state. The world, as they say, is getting smaller and tighter. Today, there is no place for rebellion to be displaced to, and the state maintains a greater monopoly on the use of force than at any time in human memory. In this context, conformity has become endemic. Rebellion, even in its mildest form, now results in ejection from employment and the complete loss of social status. Presently, a man's ability to conform and remain silent is the fulcrum upon which his entire personal fate rests, and because of this, the vast majority of men remain silent and inert when it comes to anything meaningful. Never before has European man been more compliant to the wishes of his overseers, and even his peers. Life expectancy has increased, but life is no longer being lived. Years slip by with no special achievements, the hairs turn grey and the waistline expands, despondency sets in, some join the ranks of the silent epidemic of white middle-aged males taking their own lives. Mass immigration, manifold terror, and a culture of hyperviolence occur amidst this bewildering, infuriating dystopia. And all of this will occur to one as they watch the phone-recorded images of one Darren Osborne, a 47-year-old man from Cardiff and father of four, prior to being bundled into the back of a paddy wagon last June. He had driven a van into a mosque in North London, killing a man. In one clip he staggers out of the truck shouting, Kill me, kill me, to the Muslims surrounding him. Half drunk, he appears possessed of both physical and mental anguish. And although his actions were partly an act of revenge in the wake of so many Muslim atrocities committed that year, they were foremost an act of rebellion, a rebellion against the state-enforced notion that revenge cannot even be contemplated, a rebellion against inertia and the silent suffering of inaction itself. Whatever narratives the hostile media and its fifth columns projected about this incident, the figure of the right-wing extremist is largely mythical. Not only is this true in terms of the deliberate exaggeration of the threat of violence from the white right, but also because extremism is itself merely an invention of the postmodern liberal state, which hubristically lays claim to define what is normal socialization. For the liberal totalitarian state sees itself as devoid of ideology, owning only a benevolent neutrality towards its civilian populations. However, one could probably argue that liberal states themselves are extremist because they lock persons away for years after having left bacon sandwiches outside of mosques, but that would be playing their game. A more social Darwinist view of modern politics and the devices of violence and coercion would be to suggest that the field is wide open and each combatant will play to his strengths. But for the present, it is peace and tolerance that have become the trump cards of the hostile liberal establishment. The man with a pocket full of poker chips is most likely to call an end to the evening's game. Liberalism has what it wants, and it has a population too terrified and distracted by the banalities of modern life to look back in anger. And when you hear a politician or public figure utter the refrain that this was an attack on all of us, what they actually mean is that someone has dared to suggest that the poker game isn't just over yet, and that there are chips still in play. And while liberalism continues to facilitate multiculturalism, multiculturalism will continue to facilitate the demographic eradication of our people. We simply cannot endure this status quo for very long. And while it continues, we will behold many more examples of the frustrations of the white everyman boiling over. Meanwhile, as Mr. Osborne sits in a cell for the rest of his living days, outside the jailhouse walls, storm clouds are gathering, and they are taking names.